Hi, this is your host, Sublim Bharti, and welcome to a special edition of TFR Insights for KubeCon and Cloud CloudNativeCon. And today we have with us Dan Hubbard again, CEO of Lacework. Dan, it's nice to have you back on the show. Great, glad to be here. Uh, let's talk about a state of security in cloud native space. We talked about it earlier also. It's kind of established that it's no longer an afterthought. It has kind of become part of developers' pipeline of priority. Is that is that true? Um, yeah, it's true in most in most companies now, but it's really a matter of timing. You know, a, a lot of companies don't think of it really at the beginning. They they figure out how to build a service, go get customers, and then then they figure out the security aspects. How does that you know it actually make even bigger challenge for security because if you look after these things bef while you're writing the code or while you're pushing it versus when you have already deployed in on billions of systems, then you're trying to address it. So where should security come in during uh, the pipeline in the very early stage or <laughs> once you have deployed something? Yeah, well, you definitely want to do as far kind of left as, as, as it's known uh, to be called as you can. Um, but it's really important that you do the whole life cycle. You know, build time is really important, but once it's in production, then it becomes really critical. So making sure you're doing build time all the way through to runtime, I think is becoming really the standard. Uh, what are some of the biggest security, security concerns for modern organization? And we are talking about specifically cloud native, you know. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest one that most are, are challenged with is how do you move fast and stay compliant and kind of fend off breach? Um, that's that's a big one. Um, but what I think is interesting now is that security is becoming a function of go-to-market in many companies because the customers are starting to ask, how secure are you? If we're going to put your data or our data in your service, how secure is that? So, uh, you know, it, it's the, the standard things, which is, you know, move fast, be compliant, fight off breaches, make sure investigations work, but also now this go-to-market function has come in. Going fast, all those things are good, but um, does security also delay uh, addition or release of new features update? Um, concerns regarding security and uptime, because you know you do know that applying patch might break something. You know, versus, so you do know things might break versus, hey, we might get attacked. So priority, something takes priority, you know, that we cannot afford downtime versus when do we want to apply the patch? Uh, it also depends, you know, when developers are avail available weekends or weekdays. So talk about uh, the impact of security, not only on delay of features, but also the concerns regarding uptime. Yeah, so, you know, pre-cloud, it was really nice. We had these things called change control windows where you could, you know, take all the services down and, you know, have a window of a Sunday or something and, you know, push code semi-annually and you can secure it and everything would be great. But now things are, are people, companies are pushing sometimes many times per day. Um, you know, at a minimum, you see most kind of modern SaaS companies doing weekly pushes. Um, so as the velocity of code is happening and pushes are start happening, it becomes more important for security to be part of the push process. Um, and many are doing that pre-prod or before they push, which is great to kind of learn what, what the problems are going to be. Um, but the closer you get to the engineering org, the better for security. And you have to live with the fact that code is going to be pushed all the time and very frequently. And quite honestly, you can't really stop the train unless it's critical. The day that you are stopping code from being pushed is the day you're going to be potentially subverted and code will be pushed without you knowing it because the application and pushing the application is typically the most important thing that an organization is driving towards. And then you have to bolt on security after the fact. So getting kind of the right operating model and the right architecture is really important within the company. What are the factors or vectors though? Of course, bugs uh, are part of software development. So those bugs sometimes become security issues. Then second is also misconfiguration. What are the other areas that lead to security issues? Um, so I, I think there's a, a couple that are interesting. One is that some some companies just look at one piece of the puzzle. So for example, you could say, hey, we're deploying Kubernetes, let's go all in on Kubernetes security. But actually you're probably deploying Kubernetes inside of one of the cloud infrastructures. And you're using a variety of infrastructure as, as code and a variety of platform as services. You may be using a different storage subsystem and a different network subsystem. Um, so you gotta look at everything across all you know, the, the, the different aspects 
uh, of cloud and, and modern kind of cloud security. So that's really important because that's where configurations come in. Um, vulnerabilities is really important. Um, you know, the ability to detect um, vulnerabilities before they get pushed and then look at the cause and effect of when they're pushed. How do you remediate those and how do you make sure that they're not, you're not open to the world and, and uh, the vulnerabilities don't turn into being vulnerable? Um, I would say the last is um, being uh, having visibility and visibility into your infrastructure to understand change. So change is really a, a big theme that we see because change is happening so frequently. So understanding change when it comes to risk and to threats is, is really critical. How many customers, users are embracing zero day security or DevSecOps principles there? Uh, how further they are in that, on that path? Yeah, so a lot of people are talking about a, a couple different themes. One is zero trust, and then the other one is something called least privileges. Zero trust essentially is, um, you know, a lot of people say, don't trust anything until you verify that it's good. Um, one of the problems there, and that, that's relatively easy with people, you know, hey, I don't trust this person, then I'm going to start trusting them and move. With machines and code, that's really hard because how do you know when to start uh, the trust uh, mechanisms? And you may stop and break things along the way. And what we're seeing more in, in cloud and cloud native is least privileges, which is essentially how do I minimize the privileges of my developers and the APIs and the access and the infrastructure to minimize the threat in the attack surface. Um, the real kind of high level is what we're seeing is that it's a journey. It's, it's easy to say, it's really hard to get to, and not many companies are, are far along on this path. Um, so I think it's gonna probably get worse before it gets better, but inevitably, I think we're gonna end up in a better place when it, when it comes to securing uh, the public cloud. Uh, whenever we talk about all these things, there are two aspects. One is technology, one is people. Technology is an easy problem to solve. People is the problem which is challenging. Talk about the people aspect of security. Um, so when it comes time to securing the cloud, you gotta make sure you, you pair kind of your technology and your organization and your operating model. Um, you know, lots of people talk about this thing called the shared responsibility model between the cloud provider and, and you. But what's also important is the shared responsibility model within the company. Um, you know, sometimes we call this the shared irresponsibility model because developers are pointing at security and security is pointing at developers. You know, developers are saying you're, you're, you're slowing us down, security saying you're making us insecure. So creating that right operating model, it could be security is more governance and tooling. Um, you know, uh, developers are really responsible for implementing, um, but triaging is typically uh, shared across both. But making sure you have that right operating model for the size of your company, I think is really important. And getting security specialists or at least overlays in the engineering teams is, is really important. So far, we, we talked about the problem areas and, you know, uh, what else can be done. Let's talk about what is LACE we're doing in this space. We have talked about this earlier also, but let's just be specific to KubeCon because that's, I think, next week or <laughs> whenever it is. Uh, <clears throat> so talk about what is LACE we're doing in this space. And number two is that uh, security for cloud native is a busy and crowded space. How you're trying to differentiate yourself from other players as well? Sure, yeah, so so KubeCon is coming up, um, you know, re really excited, it's another year. It's incredible how it's grown in the last, I think, three years we've been going to KubeCon. Um, Kubernetes is, is a really important component of the cloud native uh, story. Um, you know, people are pushing more and more towards Kubernetes as kind of the de facto system that, that companies are using. Uh, what Lacework does is we help you secure your entire um, cloud and cloud native infrastructure. It doesn't matter if it's for compliance and configuration, if for anomaly detection to protect against developers and API usage and outsiders, uh, breach detection. And um, we also have the ability to do Kubernetes security. And that could be Kubernetes security for your Kubernetes infrastructure, but also for your containers and your runtime uh, and build time environments. So, you know, the, the way we differentiate is that we've got a broad platform that spans across multiple categories. And we think that's really critical because you have one API, one system, one context, one set of visibility. And then we're very deep in automation within each category. And our goal is to, be deployed in your environment very, very quickly, and some customers as fast as 10 minutes, we're, we're a SaaS uh, service ourselves, and give you immediate visibility and efficacy that nobody else does without you having to write any rules, 
um, configure anything or tune anything. It automatically would just work and then will fit inside of your modern DevOps workflow uh, and your security workflow that you have today. Dan, thank you so much for taking time out from your schedule and talk about uh, Cloud Native and Kubernetes security. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you. And for more information, if you're interested on Lacework, just simply go to lacework.com. We've got all kinds of great assets there around how to secure cloud native technologies such as Kubernetes. 